Welcome back to the channel and today I have a fantastic and classic beginner tutorial. So this is one of those tutorials I've made before. A lot of people have made this sort of tutorial before in the past. It's a classic wrecking ball simulation where you have a bunch of cubes and it hits it. This is something that's not unique to me. A lot of people have done this tutorial. Um, but I decided today I'll do it in Blender 5.1. Um, just so if you're a beginner and you want to try out rigid bodies, you can see just how simple they are. So we're going to be making this scene here. I will briefly just set up some materials and lighting, but the main tutorial here is not really about that. It's just teaching you how to do this, how you want to light it and the texture it or um, add materials. That's completely up to you. But this is the tutorial, how to do this wrecking ball simulation in Blender 5.1, completely beginner friendly. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy. So let's jump in and make this in Blender. Okay, so go ahead and jump into a new scene in Blender. I'm using Blender 5.1. Um, this should work just about any version of Blender, even one of the older ones. So what we're gonna do is we'll actually start with the default cube this time, right? Usually we're deleting the default cube, but for now, let's grab the default cube and let's go S.2. So S.2 and hit enter. And because we scale this and we're gonna use it in physics, we wanna apply the scale. That's super easy. Just go Control A or Command A with the cube selected and just apply that scale. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and we're going to go into our front view. We're going to go G and Z. And if you hold in control or command, you can snap. We're going to snap it right onto that red line as we're moving it. So it's sitting right on the floor. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our modifiers. We're going to go add modifier. We're going to go search and we're going to type in array. We're going to give it the array modifier. And let's come here to the X offset. Let's make it 1.01. .01. So we want a little bit of a gap, okay? We don't want them exactly touching. So 1.01 .01 over here. And then let's go for a count of, I don't know, let's go eight. Okay, we'll have eight going this way. And then we're gonna come to the drop down and we're gonna um, duplicate this array. And then we're gonna go down to the duplication, which is this array.001. And then let's make this zero on the X, but this time we'll go on the Y and make it 1.01. .01. One, so it goes this way and keeps the same gap. Okay, let's just minimize these two arrays and let's take this bottom array, let's duplicate that. And now we've got an array.002. Let's go to the drop down, and then well, this time let's just change that to zero in the middle. And this time let's take the Z and this time the Z will make 1.005. Okay, so just ever so slightly a little gap here. There we go. Cool. So now let's take this light in the scene. We'll just delete that for now. Okay, this is our sort of box of cubes. I'm gonna just go to the top view. I'm gonna select all of them in the top view. I'm gonna go G and just move them roughly to the center of the scene here like this. Okay, there we go. And they're sitting on the floor. You can see here in the front view, that's where they're sitting. In fact, we might just grab all of them and then go in here and ever so slightly, let's go G, Z, and just move it up hardly a hair, just like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, okay? Then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our Mesh Options, add in a plane. We're gonna go S, we're gonna scale the plane up nice and big, like so. Control A and apply that scale. Cool. Then let's go to our front view. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our Mesh Option, let's add in, and we're gonna add in a torus. We're gonna just take this torus over to the side here for now. Let's just tab into edit mode and with this whole mesh selected, make sure you press A if it's not. You can go RX90 and hit enter. And then let's go into our wireframe by pressing Z and going wireframe. Let's select this top half of the verts, E to extrude and Z and extrude it up on the Z like this, nice and straight. I'm gonna go something like this and then we're gonna click you can see our little orange dot there, the origin point is down the bottom now. So if we just tab, or hit A to select everything, we can go G, Z, and just move it roughly till that orange dot's roughly in the middle like that. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go S and we're gonna scale this guy down to about this big. So almost as big as one of these um, cubes here. Control A and apply that scale as always. Then move it over here. Let's go down to about here. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and Z and move it up. Click, just so it's right underneath there. And we're gonna go R, Z, nine, zero. So R, Z, nine, zero, like that. And now we've got these two links. We're gonna select them both. 
Shift D to duplicate and Z and move it up. And just as it's under there, almost touching the next one, click. And once you make that click, you can go Shift R and just repeat that action. So you can repeat it as many times as you want. I'm gonna go with about this many chain links. Nice. And then back in the front view again, pressing one on the number pad. We're gonna take one of these links. So this one here, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate Z and move it down. And then tab into edit mode. And then let's go Shift A. Let's just go to mesh options, add in inside of edit mode. We're adding in a UV sphere. It should pop up over here in the middle. Just bring it over to the side. S to scale and just go G to move it up and just roughly place it here. Okay, so maybe scale it up a little bit. Something like that should look fine. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And now what we can do, we can grab all of these chains and go G, Z, move them up a little bit like so. Okay. And then what we will do is we'll grab maybe Let's just grab all the chains themselves, not the actual ball, just the chains. And once you have them all selected, just the chains, go over to your physics tab, give it, um, actually you wanna hold and shift and make the top one active. Let's just make the top one active here. So they're all selected, but you hold and shift and the top one is the main active element. Then you go add a rigid body. You can come here, make sure it's active. We're gonna change the shape to mesh and then make it 0.3 kilos. And then to get all of them to have that same one, you can go ahead and press F3 and type in copy from and copy from active. And now if you click on all of these chains, all these links should have the exact same properties. Then select the chain and ball, go over to your physics, give it a rigid body, and we'll leave it as active, but this time we'll make it two kilos and we'll change it again to mesh. So if we go over here and we want the top one not to fall, so we'll just select just the top chain and change its type from active just to passive, okay? So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, okay, you can see that happens, that's fine. That's just because we have a margin issue. So what we can do in that case is either come here and you can mess around with the margin, make it smaller, or a simpler way would just be to make sure your 3D cursor is in the middle of the scene. So go Shift A, cursor to world origin, and then just press A to select everything come over here and just change your transform to 3D cursor. And just go S and scale everything up. Control A and apply that scale. And now hit the space bar and you can see that's working really beautifully, okay? So let's then go to frame one. Make sure to go to frame one. Select all of this. Let's change this back to median point, okay? So select all the, bank, um, the chain and ball. And then go R, just to rotate it almost at a 45, like this, and place it right over here like that. And you can sort of see in your mind where that's gonna swing. So if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you should see it swings, okay? Now, if you want more of an impact, you can always add greater angle up to you, okay? So that's what I'm gonna leave it out. I think that looks really, really good. Cool, so let's now add something to the boxes. So we're gonna select all the boxes holding and shift select one of them to make them the main active element, okay? Oh, okay, wait a second here. I've completely forgotten. How have I forgotten this? We need to first of all go to our modifiers and just apply all of these modifiers, okay? Apply them, there we go. Tab into edit mode, press A to select everything, go P and separate by loose parts. Then tab back out, these are all now loose parts, but they all share one origin point. So just type in F3 while they're active and go origin two and go origin to to geometry, now all of them have their own origin point in the middle. And now hold and shift and make any one of them the main active element. Let's go to our physics, rigid body, leave it as active, but this time come to the shape and change it to box, okay? And then press F3 again and type in copy from and copy from active. Now all of them share that. And so that they just fall fluid through the floor, select your floor, give it a rigid body, change it to passive, and then come here to the shape. And this time we'll actually leave it as convex hull, which is good. So now let's go to our frame one. Let's hit the space bar and look what we have. Okay, so I know what's happening here. This is fine. It's just, it's working. It's just these cubes are too heavy. So let's just quickly fix that. Just select all of these cubes, hold in shift and select any one of them. Come over here and change them to 0.05 kilos. So make them light boxes, F3 and then 
if you still have copy from active there, just click on it, go to frame one, hit the space bar, and now those boxes are much lighter. If that's still not enough, you can either make the boxes lighter or simply just select a wrecking ball. And let's give that a weight of 12 kilos. Go to frame one. And now let's see if that uh, improves things. Yeah, and you can see that is much, a lot more effective here. It's smashing everything, okay? We can even go up a little bit more. Maybe let's make it 50 kilos. And this is a solid metal ball after all. So it can be quite heavy. And um, you can see here it's snapped because we've made it a bit heavier. So maybe I'll make it 25 instead. And I'll quickly just grab these boxes again. Grab one of them as the main active while well, they're all active. And then I'll just change it to 0 0.01. And then I'll go F3, copy from active. And let's see if we go to from frame one, what that looks like. There we go. And you can see that's looking beautiful. We've got a nice sort of simulation happening here. Cool. That is the wrecking ball simulation in a nutshell. So what you could do now is you can just press zero to get a new camera view. And you can always go ahead and find a shot that you think works well. So that's up to you how you want to place the camera. This is not something that I'm going to tell you, you know, do it like this or do it like that. This is something you can definitely um, kind of work out how you want to do it. But that's kind of what I'm going to go for. And then I'm going to just change this to cycles under the render engine. And under the max samples, I'll make it 45. And then I can go Z and go rendered. And I might just add in an area light. And because the scene is a little bit large, we're going to have to really pump up the light strength and the size. And I'll go Shift D just to duplicate that light, have it kind of coming from the side. So this isn't really a lighting and materials tutorial so much. I'm just trying to show you, showing you how to do the simulation, but you get the idea. There we've got some nice lights. And then if you want to, just make sure to save this somewhere in the computer. But then what we can do is we can grab all of these individual elements. So I'm going to grab the floor. I'll give it a material and under the base color, I'll give it a checker texture. And then I might just take the scale of that to 12 like that. And then I'm going to grab the ball and chain. I'm going to give that a material and I'll make it metallic, I'll bring down the roughness. And then what I'll do is I'll just hide these lights for now. And I'm just going to grab all of these links, holding and shift select the ball, go control L. I'm just going to link those materials. So they all have that material, which I'll call metal by the way. And then I'll just grab all of these cubes, hold and shift to select one of them. It should already have a material because we used the default cube. So I think they all have a material. So let's just make that more like a kind of cardboard box color. See what that looks like. Alt H just to bring back the lights. That's nice. And then if you want to, you could go to your world properties. You can come here to color, give it a sky texture, and then come adjust the strength. You can also mess around with the sun rotation if you want. Um, but for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe just use a HDRI that I have on my computer, but you guys could use whatever you want. And then you could also just go ahead and add in another plane that you can scale up and just sort of add like a wall in the background. So the camera sort of sees a wall and I might just come and add one in here. You guys kind of get the idea here of what I'm trying to do. But however you decide to sort of do this, um, adding some nice sort of like materials, you know, just to kind of break up the background a little bit can always be quite handy. So maybe I'll make this a little bit darker. Maybe I'll take down the roughness, maybe take it up just a little bit on the wrecking ball, maybe make it just a little bit darker in color, but you kind of get the idea here. Okay, and then you can go over to your render settings and you can go ahead and just give it motion blur. So here you guys can see I've just set up sort of like a very rough scene around it. And by the way, if you want to bake this in before rendering, all you need to do is go over to your um, scene properties here and just go over to your rigid body world and then go to the cache. 
You can choose how many frames you want to cache it on, but I'm just going to go for a full 250 frames and I'm going to go ahead and bake it. And essentially, it's just baking this into our blend file. So if you made any changes, it won't do anything until you delete to bake and then bake it again. But for now, I'm happy to bake this in. So now if I go over and I hit the space bar, you can see this is our simulation. How cool is that? And with that um, sort of motion blur, if it's in movement, if you go render and you render the image, you can now see we have that nice sort of motion blur here where it's moving fast. And that just makes the whole thing look really nice. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, it wasn't really so much on the lighting and the rendering and all that. It was mo mainly just showing you how to do this in Blender. So. I hope you guys are able to do this, have some fun with it. I won't be putting this on Patreon because this is sort of just like a quick little example. This is not really like anything that I think is worth putting on Patreon, but um, it's just to teach you guys as a community a little freebie just to give you something to play with, especially if you're a beginner. Try out Rigid Bodies. They're a ton of fun.